Well, welcome to Sooner Legends Podcast. As you can see, I got a I got a distinguished gentleman with me, Coop from Unfair Sports. We're going to talk a little bit of recruiting, softball, basketball. I want to welcome y'all. But first, as I always say at the first of my videos, let's kick this mule. Coop, how we doing today, brother? Doing great, brother. Uh, a little spring break action. Got to go down. Um, got to go down to Dallas. My my son's sixth birthday party. Uh, kind of birthday weekend, and uh, so got to do a lot of fun stuff with him, and uh, and and go do that. So you know, pretty good. We uh, spring practice starting back up. So seeing those, uh, seeing some yeah. clips of already coming out, uh, are, are are never bad. Um, you know, the March Madness is full on madness. And uh, you see coaching, yeah. uh, coaching vacancies are already happening and, uh, and, and coaching replacements. So it's a, uh, it's, it's, this is a, uh, it's, it's game time uh, in, in yeah. sports world. Cause this is, this is the breath, the, 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 the long breath before the storm. Exactly. Did you see that video on uh, Twitter yesterday? Uh, Jackson Arnold throwing that pass to Bauer Sharp. Yep. 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 And uh, yep. you know, I, uh, I was a baseball guy and, uh, you know, I played in college and I won't get into mm -hmm. that, but I mean, uh, you know, when I wanted to play football, um, I just, I was really good. I didn't have the, the parental support to really pursue football as long as I should have. Um, you know, I was a little bit smaller, but, uh, I, when I did play, I, you know, I played defensive back safety, um, wide receiver. And so whenever I saw that, <laughs> uh, I wasn't concerned about Bauer Sharp. I wasn't concerned about Jackson Arnold throwing the pass. I was wondering who was on coverage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and That's so, what... <laughs> well, and yeah, so I... <laughs> when I was... saw go ahead. When go I ahead. saw the when I saw the number nine, I was like, damn it, gentry. And uh <laughs> But then I was like, well, Bauer Sharp's super athletic, and that was back up over the top of him. I mean, it, it, it's good because you got to take what you want. I mean, first of all, it's, you know, spring practice, good on right. good. You know, how many, you know, how many times did Gentry do well right before that? So you can't ever get mad at the defensive back during spring games and stuff like that. You just want to see habits do well. But it, it's good to see new faces uh, in, in clips. Um, you know, it's mm -hmm. the last time we saw Jackson Arnold, uh, he had a defensive uh, lineman uh, bear hugging him. Um, right in the face. And so, yeah. uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, it's good to, for the next clip to see, um, to see, uh, you know, him tossing, uh, a, was, I, I believe he was rolling out to his right and it was yeah. a one, a one legged, a one legged flick. And it just went right over the defensive back. Bauer Sharp is a big athletic kid. And, uh, so if that doesn't get you jacked up a little bit, then, uh, then not much will. Hey, I, when I, when I first seen that on Twitter, I was thinking that's the Jackson Arnold that we know and love. I mean, because yeah. if you look at the ball when when he released it, it didn't have a flutter one. I mean, just just a tight spiral. I mean, I'm a, and then, but I'm a defensive guy. So here here's here's what I'm going to be kind of paying attention to uh, coming up in the spring game is is Zach Alley and what he's done for this defense so far. And the linebacker yeah. core. That's that's going to be, and then I'm going to be pay attention and pay attention and pay attention to the uh, D line. Uh, are we, mm -hmm. Coop? Do you know if we're going to use PJ out of Barway more this year? Yeah, um, a couple things on PJ. You got to understand, PJ has PJ still is trying to to, to find out who he is, and yeah. we may see this. We may see the same situations. Um, we may see the same situations this year with a guy like Danny Okoye. And, uh, if, if you've followed me, you know, Danny is, uh, you know, Danny's my brother. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so, but when you have somebody who is, who is that, you know, athletically gifted that you point, you know, everybody was pointing towards the NFL combine and his brother was just balling out and going crazy. Well, I mean, that was five years down the road for his brother. And last year was, you know, his first year. Um, and so I'll just hearken to when we worry about running back circulations, it's not always who's just the best running back because outside of the backup quarterback, typically the next running back is one of the more popular guys because some, the, the main guy is not doing what you're, what you're wanting. Um, right. 
but there's a reason why an Eric Gray uh, would be in for the vast majority of the snaps two years ago because DeMarco and Jeff Levy could 100% trust that whatever play that they called, whether it was going to be something where um, Eric went out for a pass, Eric blocked, Eric chipped, or Eric took the handoff, it was going to be something that he was going to take care of. Now, will he make a mistake every once in a while? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to know all aspects because if there is a rumor that a Javante Barnes comes in and he's he, he is absolutely horrid on pass blocking, you're as a defensive coordinator, you're going to dial up an excessive blitz and you're going to exactly. say, let's see, let's see the young pup do. Well, now, mm -hmm. now you have your runner who came into the game and he's not going to run the ball because they'll probably do a, a full on run blitz. But he's he, he if he stays in to uh, pass block, there's a good chance that he gets blown up, and now all the, you know the play goes dead. And so, as an offensive coordinator or the defensive coordinator, you're calling a play based on the 11 people that you're coordinating being where they're supposed to be, and doing the job that they're supposed to do. So when I make a comment <coughs> about Jackson Jackson Arnold getting absolutely bear hugged the last play that we saw him go, mm -hmm. it's because an offensive lineman missed that. That offensive mm -hmm. lineman could be phenomenal, but he missed that. And just an absolute – so I, I coach my daughter's soccer team. And one of the biggest things I, I, I teach them is have a plan, stay in control. Because right. if you just swing your foot and you have no idea what's happening, that, that's not going to help us out. So you got to have a plan. Right. But I say the number one thing that you cannot do is swing and miss at the ball. If you swing and miss, you try to kick the ball and you miss it, 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 it is a breakaway the other way. So – how that applies to PJ Adeboare and you know Nigel, Danny, all these new kids is mm -hmm. they're going to have to go in and be able to do things all the way around. You saw Rondell Bothroyd this year. Yep. My comment at the beginning of the year is you're going to look up and see halfway through the season that he's top five in the country in sacks or top five mm -hmm. in the conference in sacks. And we didn't see that. He had one, I think. But yeah. then, then, but he led the team in you know quarterback pressures, and he was very active and around. So he almost got there several times. So right. I think that PJ shared the same thing this year. Is he was almost there several times, yeah. and he had some older folks in there. Uh -huh. And so when you have guys like Javante Barnes, Gavin Sawchuck come in against Florida State. And I'm stealing this one from Gabe and Teddy, and I don't remember which one said it, but they came out. We were severe underdogs. We were missing players, and they told them, just go play. Yeah. Just go play. And they balled out. Well, then the next year, it is, well, Javante, Gavin, you guys are our guys. So it's all on you now. And mm -hmm. you see a different thing. And so we'll see that from PJ this year is, now you're a guy that is going to line up here on the edge, and we need you to be a guy. Now, mm -hmm. is it DEFCON 5 of PJ Adeboare splits 50-50 with Caden Woolard or Nigel or just a, a collection of people? No, it's not. If PJ is going to dominate, he is going to be on the field and he's going to get used more. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'll backtrack one tiny bit here, Mike, is also don't forget that there was such a piecemeal in the defensive backfield with the defensive backs, the cheetah and the linebackers and mm -hmm. the linebackers because of Danny's injury, you know, during two and a half games, right. um, you can't can had some ups and downs again, yeah. going from a guy who is going to get some playing time to being the guy. Mm -hmm. um, because again, we always want that backup guy in because we think he's going to do a lot better. Well, right. I have never coached at OU big. Maybe. I don't know if that's a big surprise to you. <laughs> never coached OU. Never coached at uh, at Clemson. I have not coached at Longhorn State. I don't even know if that's a real college. But <laughs> I do know this is our coaching staff is not only good, but everybody there's a lot of people that want them. Uh, right. You know, Beanbaugh, Todd Bates, uh, Demarco Murray, uh, Jeff Levy, all these guys, uh, Seth Latrell, Joe John Finley. People wanted these guys, and so yeah. as a fan. It's okay. Have your fit. Go on Twitter. Be crazy to an point, to an extent. Mm -hmm. But let's trust the coaches. You know, exactly. when we have, when we have, uh, I'm gonna step over here. So when we have here at Unfair Sports, 
and you've maybe seen us, we've got all these t-shirts is, uh, who is this one? This one's in Levy, I trust. We can toss that one now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, this is in BV. We trust we've got a DeMarco. We've got a Bates. We've got a beaten ball. And, 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 and it's not, we're not trying to be funny or anything. It's just like, you got to just basically say, all right, coaches, we, we trust that what you're going to do is going to be great. So what do I think? I'm going to, I'm going to say this is I feel this year that we are going to see glimpses and glimmers of what can happen with this, this crop of defensive line and <laughs> don't do not for one second discount Caden Willard because I think he is going to be a stud too. I, I like his mentality. I yeah. like the way he's going about things. But if you, if you don't, if you don't mind, Mike, let me hijack your show. Yeah, go gonna, ahead, go ahead, Coop. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read ahead. you. I'm going to read you something, and I'm only I'm going to go from number zero to number eleven for our football roster here. Uh, okay. I clicked on go, cross go, country, so that's that, that's that's right not ahead, what we're looking Coop. for. Um, the, if you take just the number zero through the number 11 on our team, so that's all mm -hmm. the single digits, 10, 10 and 11, I'm going to read these names off and just tell me, how does that not get you excited about, about the offense? So at number zero, you have, uh, all right, here we go. Here it is. Uh, so at zero, you got uh, redshirt freshman, Caleb Hicks running back. A lot of, a lot of people are excited about him. Correct. Yep. Also at number zero on the defensive side, David Stone. Um, if <laughs> there, not be if there is, if there is a player that you, uh, if there is a player in college football that has higher expectations than him, I, it, it's not very few. It's not very many. Sorry, because he is not only the the um, the grand prize defensive tackle, defensive lineman, um, just countrywide but he's he's an okie so yeah re-establishing that defensive line not mm -hmm. to just i because I, I think our defensive line in 23 was a stalemate i, I, I think they, they just they just held their own which yeah. is much better than getting your getting trucked all year long exactly so, exactly so this year if we see just a dominant at times defensive line I think this team has got some craziness in front of them. They do. And this is just on defensive. So mm -hmm. here's number. So the first number one, Jaden Gibson. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> if I could do prop bets on Jaden Gibson, I see Jaden Gibson taking a role like um, Lee Morris did, um, where the guy's going to show up with 40 ish catches and nine, 10 touchdowns. You know, when, when Kyler and Baker were throwing to Lee Morris, it's like if that guy caught first downs and touchdowns, we, you know, Nick six this year, every, what was it at one point he had 10 catches, eight touchdowns or something like that. Something nuts. So Jaden Gibson, number one, I mean, six, five, 200. When we did our show with Justin Harrington, he brought him up. When we did our show with uh, Kendall Dolby, he brought him mm -hmm. up. So, I mean, the, the defensive players are bringing this cat up. So that's great. Uh, the next number one is Desan McCullough. I've, I, that right there is when we when we uh, announced that we that he transfer, transferred from Indiana, you probably heard me up where you live, Scrant. Because I love me some Desan McCullough. Yeah, it's and, and Desan McCullough is plagued by one thing, and it is the fact that. We don't know where you're the most effective. I think that if he was healthy and stayed in one spot, he would be extremely effective. Right. But also last year, was Desan McCullough, he lost the job to Justin Harrington, right? Mm -hmm. Then he gets hurt. And then we see Kendall Dolby come in and play. And Dolby shined the most when it came time to coverage. So right. if I'm Desan, I'm with Chavis or Ali or... Uh, Whoever I'm, you know, whether it's Coach Hall, Coach Falai, I'm running. I, I mean, I am picking up tight ends, H backs, and running backs all spring long to get into coverage. And he has right. these capabilities because I shared this a, a while back, but uh, we were talking to uh, Colin Kennedy from 247, and he said that during a seven on seven drill, uh, when Desan was still in high school, Desan was playing safety in a seven on seven drill at 6'5, 200 pounds. 
and holding his own and just basically mm -hmm. like an, a center fielder, all free safety. So he's the world is in front of him, a few more LBs. And I think that some creativity, maybe Zach Alley coming in and just having that as a goal, right. maybe that helps us out a little bit because we, we can find out, you know, do we get him in the right spot? Because is cheetah the best spot for him? Um, well, uh, you know, when he was at Indiana, wasn't he in, on the edge? Yeah. What, yeah, what he played know? a lot of the edge, a lot of stand up. And, but I mean, I also got to say this is, I mean, kind of like I said about Sawcheck and Barnes against Florida State, is at what point do you go to Dasan and you just let him loose? Because I, I feel like if you rush him, you can stand him up, you can put him on the line. Um, you know, we're going to have, listen, Mike, we're going to have our handcuffs, our handcuffs on a little bit this year just by, the, the inexperience or the defensive line yeah. in the middle. But mm -hmm. I really, truly think that if you take a Dasan McCullough and you tell him, um, hey, here's what we got for you. We, we're we going to move you all over the pass. Your job is to put your hands on the quarterback or put your hands on the ball that he just let go of. And I think that he's going to be able to do those things. So I'm excited to see him because it's not so much of, I mean, first it's health, but secondly, I think it's going to have to be do we have Desan at a at a point to where we know what he is going to do, and we we have a role for him, and that's going to be his role because I think that's going to help him out a lot. Yeah, I, I agree. I one hundred percent agree with that, Kate. It, so we uh, got Caleb Hicks. Caleb Hicks is number zero. David Stone, Jaden Gibson, Desan McCullough, and then maybe the biggest question mark I'll say on this one, followed by the biggest known Javante Barnes. Yeah. Javante. Yeah. Javante Barnes, the running back. If you decide it, I have been dealing with a foot issue for approximately a year and a half. Um, it's a mm -hmm. degenerative thing. And I know that you can just wake up in the morning, have done nothing the day before. Now I'm also 42. Uh, Javante's <laughs> 20. So there's, there's a difference there, but, um, you know, it, it, you can wake up and have issues with the foot. So if he is, you know, in the old school days, you'd say, oh, he's a year, year plus removed from his ACL injury. Well, Javante is a year plus removed from this, you know, when, once it's go time, he's going to be a year plus. So the best ability is availability. And I think that um, if Javante, he's going to enter the, he's going to enter the field fighting for the number two spot at running back. And he, mm -hmm. he's going to have experience and a leg up over all these guys because Listen, uh, Caleb Hicks, I'm excited for him. I want to see him too. Um, the next person after him, it's going to be Taylor Tatum, and he's hitting home runs in high school still. So, yeah. so Javante, if Javante can come in and just run with the intent of hurting folks, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Let Gavin Sawchuck be our lead back. But when Javante comes in, I want I want it to be like when Tali Walker ran last year to when yes. you just watched who tackled him and just saw how they got up. It was there, it was yeah. never like well, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Like, it was always like, please just let, Ouch. Oh, run, run the hurry up so that you guys could throw the ball some more. Um, so Javante Barnes, a lot of expectations. What do you expect to see out of Javante this year? I'm from what I noticed Coop with Javante last year is when he would hit. I now I, I don't know football lingo. I'm just a fan and I watch, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to say, for lack of a better term, when he would hit that A gap, it seemed like his head was down. He wasn't paying attention. And then it seemed like the, the turf would be perfect and he would slip and fall for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here, dang, fella. Yeah. Now, I'm, want, a, I'm, I'm wanting to see the Javante Barnes that I seen when we played Florida State. Yeah. And listen. <clears throat> We it seems like on our team we always have one guy that just is plagued by the turf monster. Uh, yeah, you know where uh, Trey Franks was a wide receiver several years back, and he and yeah. that guy would field the kickoff, and he would have nothing but wide open you know space in front of him running four four you know or lower, and <laughs> it, he would trip over the twenty yard line. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I do see I do see that. So. It, when when you see a lot of footing issues and and vision issues, typically it is a comfort situation, mm -hmm. and and so not digging too deep into football, but 
last year when we run the RPO as much as we do, yeah, that's hard on the offensive line and it's hard on the running backs. And why is because you've got there is a there is a symbiotic relationship between how the offensive scheme is called, the play call, and the running back. And so if the running back is used to one scheme and I know it's a, I know it's a run play. I'm going to get the ball. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. It play action pass is completely different than RPO. And you know, because at that point you fake the handoff, you find your blocking assignment, you leak out, whatever. I think (laughs) Javante has got all this as a world, but I think that having an offensive lineman as, as inexperienced as they're going to be Mm -hmm. having an offensive line set up with a, with a scheme, that is not so RPO dependent. I think that's going to help our running backs because how the offensive lineman block for the running backs is going to determine a lot about what the running backs are going to want to do. Because if they see, right. if you're running, you know, if you're running, running, you know, let's go with a, just a simple halfback draw. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't even think that we ran a halfback draw in years, but if you run a simple halfback draw, like, you know what your blocking schemes are. You know where everybody's going to be, and you know to go to it. If you're running right. a play-action bootleg, um, you know, to the left side of the field, he's going to know what to do. But if it's an RPO, there's a, like, when you when an RPO is called for him, he doesn't have a clue. He doesn't, he doesn't have a clue what the quarterback's going to do. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like I'm – think I'm going to run the ball. I think I might get the hand, you know, so there, so the simplification on offense is how can we, if the offensive lineman can block can, can get to a spot to where like the defensive line this past year, you just need to just be good. You don't have to be great. We don't need to be good. Joe Moore, just be good. And you're going to have some busts. You're going to, that's going to be fine. Yeah. We we got to, we're going to have to accept that. But for guys like Javante, Gavin, Caleb Hicks, Taylor Tatum, and Megwa Megwa, you know, we need to see some some understanding and some flow and rhythm between the offensive line and the running backs. So I'm going to get yeah. off of the running backs now because <laughs> okay. um, I could talk about the running backs for another 20 I minutes. Could, right? uh, <laughs> so, the sec- so I said Javante Barnes, maybe the biggest question mark of this, is mm-hmm. followed up by the, maybe the, the biggest assurance, and that's Billy Bowman Jr. Yes. Um, guys, if you don't what? understand that Billy Bowman Jr. coming back, it was big for this team. Whew. Think of if you saw this team, Brent Venables' first year, we look a lot like that going into the SEC. If it's not for the returning uh, of the return of Dejon Terry, Billy Bowman, Stutzman, uh, it, it's yeah. it's. That's right up the middle. And in baseball, you need to have the middle needs to be secure. All your the catcher, time. your pitcher, your shortstop, second base, and your center field. If you're strong up the middle, you've got a great chance. If yep. you are weak up the middle, you're going to be in trouble. As that a St. Louis Cardinals true. fan, it is. I, I, I Listen, I cannot tell you what kind of comfort it was for 37 years of Yadier Molina. Um, you know, he was, he, he's one of the greatest of all times Yeah, and he was solid and we've had solid people up the middle. So Billy Bowman this year is going to be on a lot of watch lists and my encouragement for Billy Bowman would be just be Billy Bowman, just be yourself, yeah. go out and play football and, and help lead this team because Billy Bowman tries to go out and win the Thorpe award, or if he could tries to go out and become first team all American, I, I worry about that. I, I also too. think. I also think that he has he has a, a, a little bit of a leg up because Mike, did you know that our safety and defensive backs are actually one of the strongest points on our team for Oklahoma I, football? I heard that somewhere, Coop. I can't remember where 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 I heard it at. It might have been on you and Jay's show. <laughs> it's I, I'll guys, it's not, uh, this is, this is fun. This is fun to again, not look at the defensive backfield and go just hold them under 50, please. Um, yeah, you just know, hold like this, under is, 50. this, this is good. So Billy Bowman coming back is, is humongous. Billy Bowman is small at five, 10, five, 11 ish. Yeah. yeah somewhere you know, he's, in there. he's not honey badger small, but he is small. And so I, there, there's, he needs to come out and show that like technique, 
eyes and discipline are, are, are all strengths of his, because when it comes to measurables, that may not, might not be the, be the sense. Yeah. I don't know if you see the three interception returns for touchdowns, you know, yes, like I or stuff like, um, if you do, that's great. Then I'll, I'll, I'll jump on board with that. But you guys got to understand, like he may pick off some passes. It may not be as big as last year, but Billy Bowman number two. So, yeah. Uh, up next is is a fella I want to hear your thoughts on first, but Jalil Farouk. You know, I I spoke on Jalil in a previous video, and everybody was hard on him in that Alamo Bowl for fumbling them. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Twice, Coop? Uh, yeah. He, he, but, it would have been the kickoff return, right? And then he had a long pass. Yeah. On, I believe it might've been a third down and he, uh, you know, it was like a third and long or second and long. And he, yeah. And he coughed it up after 40 but, yards and he, and but, he had two or three of those throughout the season too. Yeah. But there's two games in particular that, that stood out my mind on the good of Jalil Farouk was one, the Texas game. And especially yeah. that, that final drive, he was part mm -hmm. of it. He owned Drake Stoops. Yeah. And then, and then the BYU game where Jackson calls the audible to and throws the pass to Jaleel uh, to seal the game. And, and so I'm not as hard on Jaleel as most Oklahoma fans are for the simple fact, <clears throat> Coop, I don't know if you'll agree with me on this or not, but that, that wide receiver, slot receiver, whatever you want to call it position, it's not a matter if, it's a matter when of dropping passes, fumbling, you know, having an off day. I've seen some of the greatest wide receivers in forever have those mistakes. So I'm not as hard. Yeah. But what I'm looking for, Jalil, this next year is to be, uh, if if he gets more involved, get, you know, yards after catch, the yak yards, stuff like that. That's what I'm going to be. And, and if he's cleaned up his little turnover woes that he had in Alamo Bowl, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is. So obviously when you bring in, um, Burks, um, Oh my God. Burks has a chance and he's not in this little area, but he has a chance to be, I mean, there's some people who talk about him as potential first round draft pick, um, first or second. And, and so I don't know where he is going to play, but if I, if I were Jalil Farouk, I would, I would be studying everything that Drake Stoops did last year, and yes. I would move over there, and I would, I would tell the coaches, "Hey, here," or go look at Debo Samuel, um, yeah. uh, film because though he is not as thick as Debo was, um, I, I, I think that that's that might be who he is. Um, but here's the here's the deal: is as the as the talent continues to stockpile, you got a guy like Jalil who you can't forget and you can't basically wash away because Jalil has done a great, a lot of great stuff for us, but you know, this is a, we're going to the sec. He is going mm. to still be a person who has five years of experience, four years of experience. Um, right. You know, he showed an, an enormous amount of loyalty by not transferring out to USC because Caleb Williams is one of his best friends and exactly. out from the same area. And so, right. and so now, Maybe Lincoln said, hey, I got this other kid I'm going to bring in. So, you know, if you want to, you can fight for us. I don't know. But uh, but just moving away from Jalil, uh, you know, it, it's we're going to need his leadership. We're going to need him to show. Yes. Um, because I think that, that the loudest thing he can do is say, you know what, guys, I ended on a horrible note and I am going to run it back to the and do everything in my body and my power to 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 help this team. So, yes, that, I agree with you 100 percent. Coach. Now and I'm that, I, I'm gonna go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say a little bit on Dion Burks. I seen him play at Purdue last year, and this guy is freaking phenomenal. God, he's, he is dirty. So wow. Uh, I'm I'm gonna cruise through this because otherwise we're we're not gonna make it all the way through. So okay, anyway, I'm ahead. starting out with Caleb Hicks, David Stone, Jaden Gibson, Desan McCullough, Javante Barnes, Billy Bowman. Jalil Farouk, Robert Spears, Jennings. I think is gonna be a starting safety. Nick yep. Anderson. You know what that is. Justin Harrington. Yep. Andrell Anthony. Oh, my God. Woody Washington. Mm -hmm. Deion Burks. Yes. Nigel Smith. Yes. Yes. At All day. Yeah. Jaron Kanick. 
<laughs> God, we please. can talk about we can talk about Canik. I I seen some good, but damn, I seen some bad out of him last year, especially in that BYU game. And and Coop, uh, one thing I noticed, especially when uh, Stutzman got hurt and he was out for what two and a half games, something yeah. like that. To me, I'm sitting here thinking, you know what, Stutzman is Canick's training wheels, and when the training wheels is off and cut. Canick seems lost. I am hoping, I am praying to all the legendary Oklahoma linebackers that's in football heaven, come down and exercise the demon out of this young man and let him play to the level I know he can play. Yeah, uh, Jay brought up a a really good point. He expect he he said if you line up Danny Stutzman two years ago and Canick last year, they look very, very similar. Yeah. They look that, very, very similar. Uh, so yeah. is there a chance that uh, here, I, I would say this, this is Canick's year. If you don't take it over, there's somebody already there. Um, exactly. and, and, and we'll get there shortly too. But uh, Canick is the guy. Don't forget. He has been playing linebacker for just a few years now. And right. he went from not being a linebacker to not playing linebacker to, going and playing linebacker for one of the best defensive coaches in college football. Right. So the responsibility, the accountability, it, it is, it, it is paramount. And so uh, this is Canick's year. If he wants to take it over, this is it because I promise you Kip and Kobe, they don't care if Janet, if Canick's uh, feelings are hurt or, at all. But if he takes, if, if Canick takes the leap that Stutzman did last year, that's that's hard to even like think about. Um, exactly. That being said, keep in mind the linebackers play a lot better when the defensive linemen can let them. Exactly. You're you're right. You're right, Coop. And I, I so, think that's I, I think that's where everybody is on on the, on a Jaron Canick about. I mean, it just wasn't all Jaron Canick. I mean, your defensive line has got to allow you especially at the at the linebacker spot to yeah. allow you to do what you need to do. Yeah, 100%. So let's move on to the next fellow. The other number seven on offense, Zion Kearney, freshman wide receiver. Zion Kearney. Guys, <clears throat> C- <clears throat> I'm going to say it now. C.D. Lamb. I'm saying C.D. Lamb. Um, I, I'm, I'm saying it now. Um, Zion Kearney, eh, he, I have the utmost confidence that he is going to be an absolute stud. Now, yeah, CD Lamb had a major role to play as a freshman. He was not counted on and he was not depended on, but he balled out. He Zion's did. going to find himself further down in the depth chart. But I promise you, Emma Jones is playing with house money right now. And he Emma is. Jones wants his best receivers out there. And we have a lot of them. And so we have experienced transfer portal leaving Oklahoma uh, sans a specific offensive lineman from Kansas or Missouri. Um, Mm -hmm. Everybody who typically leaves, we're like, that's cool. Bye. Like David. um, Yeah. 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 All the guys who have left over the past couple of years, they were guys who were never going to play anyway. Exactly. As the talent, as the talent continues to, show up like it is where scholarship athletes are coming in as walk-ons. OU fans prepare for one thing. We are going to see guys that we don't want leave to leave. They're going to be leaving and it's not going to be mm-hmm. tampering issues. It's going to be a guy like, you know, in the wide receiver room, who's number seven on the depth chart behind six freaks. Mm-hmm. And that guy. Uh, so think of Jamison Williams, Jamison Williams, was uh, at Ohio State, and he was back behind Jackson Smith and Jigba, um, the the kid out in New Orleans now, uh, Olave, yeah, Olave. Uh, Marvin yeah. Harris, Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, and yeah. they had a couple other guys that didn't actually pan out. So Jamison Williams transfers to Alabama, and he's their best player on offense, best skill player on offense. So that may happen to us, and it's going to suck to watch a – Jaquez Petaway decide, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere else or something like that. Not saying he's going anywhere. I, I love Jaquez and I think he's going to be a, a, an emerging star this year, but 
just just keep that in mind. Like with guys like uh, Zion Kearney, I think that like if he has that skill and if you see him play, the coaching staff believes in him and the future that mm -hmm. he has. Because I promise you, I love Jalil Farouk, but if you need to get somebody else out there, but again, Jalil plays because he blocks, he knows the plays. He's not going to make the mental mistake of, you know, he's going to, he, he may have a fumble. That's that, that is, it is what it is, but it is he is not going to line up out of where you got to waste the time out. He is right. not going to get his number called and false start. Um, he is, you know, those are not things. And so you got to be able to do the, the, the small things and to get in front of um, any of these guys on, on, on receiving. And when we talked, we, I said, Andrew Anthony, Andrew Anthony is going to have to, uh, you know, he's going to have to work himself back. Uh, you know, any time of a torn ligament, that, that that's absolutely going to have to happen. But yeah. you had Andrew Anthony, Deion Burks, uh, uh, Nick Anderson, and, and so Jaden Gibson, all are single digit numbers. And right. so I, I'm here for the party. So let's continue. Okay. Number eight, Macari Seatbelt Vickers. I. Uh, I am hoping this is his breakout year because I love me some seatbelt. I love, love his attitude and I hope he just shines this year. Cause that's the one I, I've been keeping my eye on it. Seatbelt Vickers. I love him to death. We heard Isaiah Wagner and McCarr. There was, there was talk that Isaiah, uh, that Wagner was going to walk out and start our opening game um, this past year. Um, and then he got, he had a little hammy, uh, that mm -hmm. defensive back room, it, it, it has been injuries. And where I yeah. talked about it earlier is with that, with such a flux in, in the defensive backfield, it was hard, but Macari saw some time and we uh -huh. want more. So Macari Vickers is your, is your, is your last number eight, uh, Michael Hawkins jr. Who is going to be fighting, <laughs> fighting for snaps as the backup quarterback. Um, you, you know, we are bringing in, uh, you know, our sooner legacy, Casey, Thompson. but yeah, Casey's going to be in, in, in tow, but Casey is what he is. And yeah. I, I can tell you this is if you watched, I don't know if you got a chance to watch, um, the, uh, the Allen versus, um, Jackson Arnold versus Michael Hawkins jr. Two years ago. No, um, I didn't. I didn't. Coop. That game worried me and excited me all at once because um I, I i kid you not um jackson jackson won that day by by a large amount and uh hawkins did not i mean they, they were just allen was just severely uh overmatched in that game and uh so you know michael hawkins had some unfortunate stuff happen he mm -hmm. moved uh, his daddy, if you don't remember his dad, his dad was uh, was a guy who came in. He played defensive back for a year. He was yeah. drafted by the Packers. Um, yeah. it, he is going to, and his brother Malik is going to be a stud too. So yeah. uh, watch out because you may see Hawkins this year on yeah. some uh, on some sprint draws and stuff like that because, I, I mean, I think that his athleticism is, is, is pretty nuts. But the point of our exercise, if you're just joining in with us, is I'm going through the lineup not through the whole lineup, but I just wanted to point out the talent on just people who wear the Jersey number zero through 11. So let's, let's wrap this up. Number nine, Gentry Williams. I think he's a first round draft pick. If health yep. is there. Yeah. Um, he, he's a Tulsa boy. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, out of Booker T he is, he is a stud. Um, you saw any time, you know, the, the interception, uh, you know, against Quinn Ewers at the beginning of the Texas game, um, that was caused because Canick actually read the play correctly and he dropped back into the passing lane and yeah. Quinn had a double clutch and Gentry, <laughs> Gentry catches the ball. So, right. um, but Gentry's issue has been health. Mm -hmm. uh, number 10, Kip Lewis. Don't need to talk about Kip Lewis because I think that, I think that um, if Kip ends up playing, it, it's all good. Yep. We do not need to worry about anything. Um, he is, he is a stud and if Kip Lewis, if Kip Lewis could put, uh, two 10 pounds, you know, dumbbells in his pants or something like that <laughs> yeah. and give him a few extra pounds, that guy's being, that guy's being whispered about as a potential, you know, all American. Yeah. So watch out for Kip too. And then let's wrap it up. So we got Bauer Sharp at number 10, yep. Jackson Arnold at number 11, Kobe McKenzie at number 11. 
So just reading through this, the talent, Caleb Hicks, David Stone, Jaden Gibson, DeSama College, Vontae Barnes, Billy Bowman, Jalil Farouk, Robert Spears Jennings, Nick Anderson, Justin Harrington, Andrew Anthony, Woody Washington, Dion Burks, Nigel Smith, Jaron Kanick, Zion Kearney, Makari Vickers, Hawkins Jr., Gentry Williams, Kip Lewis, Bauer Sharp, Jackson Arnold, and Kobe McKenzie. Guys, how that's can, how can you not get excited? No, oh, and and that is and so that's not getting down into guys in the offensive numbers. Uh, you got Des Malone who came in defensive back from Fresno, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so many different stuff. So right. I, I'm going to stop with all that because I, I, I shared that with, uh, with PG and J and mm -hmm. I was like, you guys look at this, but that just blew my mind. So if, if you're looking for spring, like start looking for when you're looking at the, the, the defensive lines, you're going to have Jaden Jackson, David Stone, uh, White Gilmore, uh, Danny Okoye, who gained 22 pounds between yeah. December and uh, I have to check my text messages. But I asked him, I was like, Doug, is that real? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm trying my best. And so wow. Danny has no idea what he is yet. There was one of the Jurassic Park movies where they made one of the super killer dinosaurs. And it got out. And I think it was Jeff Goldblum says he doesn't even know what he is yet. Like he's learning, like he's just going out and learning what's going on. Danny is going to be the same way. And I, if I, and I've told him, I was like, watch PJ, ask PJ, what did you do that you, that didn't work out? And what did you do that did work out? Because mm -hmm. I said, it's not about, it's not about craziness or anything like that. What it is, is I want you to, you know, if you can avoid a failure to progress faster, like that's great for you. That's great for the team. Right. So we've got so much talent across that defensive line. And last year we had no offensive gel at all. So the defensive line looked like monsters in the spring game. This year, we kind of don't know what's what. Because if the defensive line's dominant, does that mean our offensive line is garbage? If the offensive line plays really, really well, does that mean that the defensive line is a bunch of duds? Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't see either of those happening. Uh, I, 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 I see kind of a one way or the other. So... Um, that, that's, I just wanted to read that off because those were, as I was, I was looking for something the other day and I'm scrolling through and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I've already got a Koye nicknamed. I'm giving him the what, nickname what you... of my favorite. I'm giving him the nickname of my favorite, uh, defensive lineman of all time. Randy White from the Dallas Cowboys. I'm, I've already nicknamed, right. uh, Okoye the Manster. The Manster. I like it. I like it. Uh, when we had him on, we were talking to him about um, several different things. But uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he those guys and, and they're great dudes. Well spoken, uh, yeah. respectful. Um, you know, it, it's great when you when, when you see that because, uh, you know, not to knock on any other program. But I mean, you know, you're still seeing reports out there from other universities of, you know, guys speeding and racing and doing crazy, stupid stuff. And Get like, DUIs. I, yeah. And, and so I'm just wondering, like, as a parent, it's not like Chavis and Bates are no name dudes who don't know how to coach. Like these are some of the best at the, at the craft. Right. And so at what point do you go? I see the soul mission. I see what Brent Venables is doing. I see it, how they want to They want to turn my boy into a man. At exactly. what point do you just go, let's ride with that. Georgia's great and all that. That's, that's terrific. But as an Oklahoma fan, um, you know, we've, we've, we've been the bad boys on the block and yep. you know, that, that's, that, that's not who we are anymore. So, yeah. Cause you're, I, I'm living the proof. Uh, the first bad boys on the block, 1972 at the end of the season, when we got put on that three year probation. Oh man, I lived through the Switzer area and I'm still <laughs> alive to talk about it. <laughs> it's it, it, it nobody wants to be on sports illustrated the way that we were at that point so no uh no, 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 but no. uh well well i tell you what keep you don't know what this means to me you coming on my show uh, uh i hijacked it i hijacked no you didn't uh, no I you didn't sir no you <laughs> didn't sir no you didn't that i and you know i from a historical historical side of a podcaster I actually learned a lot in this little little segment. I mean, okay. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get not trying to get to you guys this level, but I'm I'm just trying to learn the lingo, so to speak. So, 
but uh i checked my i've got 211 subs now so apparently well, we need to get I'm, we need to get that pumped up and and i tell you what um you know unfair sports and sooner or later i mean uh, 95 0.9% of that goes to Jay. He did leg work. I, and people don't know how Jay and I, Jay and I used to work uh, in telco together a long time ago. And I had a crypto, uh -huh. uh, a Bitcoin uh, radio show for uh, about two years. And, um, and I, uh, I was interested in it and I really, really liked it, but it wasn't something that like I, I could consume content off, off camera, just hours at a time. Right. Um, you know, football is, and, 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 and Sooner sports is because uh, again, I, uh, I just absolutely, um, I I've seen good days. I've seen bad days. You know, I, I, you and I can go historical at another time. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I was at, uh, I was at the game when the bomb blew up in the, uh, in the North oval. Um, I believe it's the North oval. You know, I, I was there for that. I was there when TCU walked in as with Rhett Bomar as the starting quarterback and beat us at home. Yep. And, uh, you know, I was, the, I told you, you know, the Antonio Perkins three punt return touchdown game, one of the most you know, favorite games of all, the Texas Tech jump around game, maybe the most oh. nutty one I've ever been to. I um, was at that one. And my God, I tell you what, that is, that was one of the wildest games I had ever been to in my life as a Sooner. Yep. It was, it was, I did not miss a home game between 2000 and 2006, I believe. Um, I, I was at every single one, even though I was going to college up in Kansas, uh, my freshman year, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, listen, it, th there is a lot as a Sooner fan to be excited about. And, yes. uh, I, I, my encouragement to everybody is, 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 is this is, we put out content because people want to hear it. They want to listen about it. You know, people are excited, whatever you can do to feed the football. Um, but I, I, I am also one that says, Hey, listen, fans, um, you know, there's, you listen on the radio, the, the timeshare exit strategies and stuff like that. Don't spend your money on timeshares, sign up for 25 right. bucks a month for the crimson and cream and uh, collective. And you don't need to do a thousand. You don't need to do 5,000. But again, is, is if you can do 25 bucks a month, that I, I feel like that is just don't eat one day. Uh, you know, if you can't afford it, don't eat one day uh, or don't get Starbucks for two days. But um, but yeah, you know, go in, do that. Sign up, uh, put it on repeat, uh, you know, lose the logins so that, you know, you, you can't ever you can't ever quit it. Uh, you know, that's that's my favorite thing <laughs> is is, you know, uh, you know, repetitive uh, subscriptions like that. Um, so yeah, I encourage everybody to go in and do that because that's going to help our athletes. Um, yeah, exactly. you know, we've got a lot of good stuff, Mike, you and I need to probably talk again next week, um, yes, and do what definitely. we do, what we originally were going to do because, yeah. uh, the, the sooner women are, are going crazy. Uh, the baseball team just went, went bananas over the, uh, over the year. Um, I am mentally starting to kind of let's bring Kelvin home. Yeah. I, I, me I'm too. there. I'm, I'm there. Let's bring Kelvin home. Come home, um, brother. It's, you know, he, he, did he break rules? Yes. He text <laughs> yeah. message recruits too many times, but in a day now to where you can pretty much do anything, let's, let's bring him home because there's, listen, Houston, that's a great story and all. And mm -hmm. but I don't know if he'll, I don't know if he'll leave it because me Houston either. has passion. And in order for us to get passion back around the basketball team, it's hard when this when the, the the roster flips every single year. It is not fun to watch. It's not athletic, and that's not. I don't think that's Moser's fault. I don't think that's any specific player's fault. I just think it's harder than hell nowadays for kids to trust the process and to stay in for the dream. So, um, if Moser wants to come back for another year, I'm not going to throw a fit. But if, if the if the administration really wanted to do something it's time um and moser may leave over for depaul he may leave for another another mm -hmm. job or something like that uh if he leaves uh, you know i thank him for for the best but we just you know outside of buddy hield's year <clears throat> yeah we we haven't had anything in quite a long time and i only count no. the trey, the trey young year because that season was probably the most difficult season to watch because yeah. i mean it, 
between him and Manic, it looked like we had two All Americans on our team through you know through twelve games, and mm-hmm. um, then then Brady couldn't hit a shot again, and Trey you know was was rough in the locker room. Um, Hell, I'm th- I'm thinking about breaking out my shovel and seeing if I can resurrect Billy Tubbs. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a. <coughs> It's it, it's 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 run and gun, turn and burn. Yeah, like I, I listen. It's I heard I heard a ESPN national a radio host say it the other day. Of you know, if I were you, I would resurrect the old Billy Tubbs offense and just run that. And Billy I think ball might have been. Yeah, you do the Billy ball because I mean that was that was tough. It was tough for people to. But again, you got to have the athletes. You got to have the buy in. Yeah. And I think that it's just really really hard for Oklahoma basketball fans because I think a lot of people would like to go to the games. But if you go to the game and you are just watching just nothing be fluid and nothing, nothing, uh, it's just hard to watch. And so it is uh, Oklahoma sports. I mean, that's pretty much the one that we're lacking. Bronchek is, is balling out. Uh, oh my if you God. don't, it, it, let's see when are they, when are they're, they're about to start here in the next hour, I think. Right. Uh, Four 30. Yeah. So in, in 30 minutes, they're playing Indiana um, up in Albany. So, I uh, got to say, I have no clue about Indiana. Uh, they are the lower. It's a five, four matchup. Um, but, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, we'll, we'll be back next week to talk a little yes, bit more will. about some more stuff too. So, and Coop, thank you so much for jumping in. Uh, tell Jay that, uh, I sent him a message on discord to see if he wanted to come back. He'd come on. He never did respond. I assumed he was busy, but, uh, he's, he, I haven't talked to Jay in about 10 days. So <laughs> he's, but, uh, we both took new jobs this uh, at the end of the year, and it's 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 been uh, it's been challenging because free time disappears very fast. Right. Well, Coop, thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, and uh, this this means the world to me because you and Jay are one of my favorite podcasters on mm-hmm. YouTube, and uh, I appreciate y'all's plug for me when I come on y'all's live, and I. Do a mention, uh, greatly appreciate. Yeah. Well, Hey man, uh, I, I, any, anything that I can help, uh, you know, what you're doing is different than what a lot of other people doing. A lot of people want to talk about everything going on, but, uh, you know, I promise you this is you get a bunch of sooner fans together and they start reminiscing, uh, on Adrian Peterson. They start reminiscing on, uh, you know, Sam Bradford on Gerald McCoy. And it, it's fun to talk about old school days. It's fun to talk oh, yeah. about. Uh, I think the first suggestion I had uh, to you was, uh, Demond Parker. Demond Parker. Yeah, it was. I was. I, I thought that was was. Uh, and Demond was was one of those studs. And and so I, again, if you're watching this and you have and you just happened on this, um, you know, Mike does a lot of stuff where he goes back and looks at some of the old school uh, stuff and really get back into that. And that's what you do in the off season is you reminisce and you hope for the future. Well, Coop, thank you for jumping on with me, brother. And uh, we'll chop it up next week, brother. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hit your black button on the way out. And this is the legend. We'll see you on the backside. God bless. Boomer Singer.